So in this definition, I want to introduce you to one of the central notions of calculus that we're going to use over and over again. So first off, some of the notation needs to be made clear. So uh, what does this mean right here? Uh, a, this is saying A, uh, this symbol means in or element of, and then the, the real number. So this is saying let A be an element of the real numbers. So all I'm saying in this is A is a number. And I want to let f be a function that's defined for all x near a. And yes, I'm waving my hands on what near means. This definition is rather informal for now. If you want to get the formal definition, come back and take Introduction to Real Analysis, and we will do it all formally. But for now, uh, your intuitive notion of near works just fine. So the point is, don't miss this. The function does not need to be defined at A. It's perfectly fine if it's not defined at A. It just has to be defined near A. Okay, so we write LIM, which stands for limit, the limit as X goes to A of F of X equals L, where L is some real number. So these limits, we're gonna say that this limit equals a number L if the values of f get closer and closer and closer to l as x gets closer and closer and closer to a. And I want to point out to you, this is important, that the limit as x goes to a of f of x, it might not exist. And in this case, we denote this by d n e, does not exist. So uh, it, I'm not saying that every one of every time that I write down limit x goes to a of f of x, I'm not saying that's always going to be a number. I'm saying we say this expression if f gets closer and closer and closer to l as x gets closer and closer to a. And if that doesn't happen, if there's no l where that happens, then we say that the limit does not exist. So some notation. So we've already mentioned uh, this new notation. And I want to point out that this is the same as the notation that I've showed you in one of the previous videos. This is the same as writing f of x goes to l as x goes to a. Either one is fine. We'll typically use the notation on the left side. You should make sure that you're comfortable with that. And just to say it again, I've said it once, I'll say it again. The limit as x goes to a does not depend on f of a. You, you, it's easy to think, oh, just plug it in. Uh, no, not in general. Sometimes you can do that, but much of the time, the interesting cases, you can't do that. And uh, we're going to learn all about that. So in general, this limit does not depend on f of a. f of a might not even exist. So there might not even be an f of a to talk about. So make sure that's clear to you. Okay, so some examples that we've already set up and talked about. Uh, we did the example as um, we noticed that, look, this function is undefined at zero, but when we plugged in numbers that got closer and closer and closer to zero, then we noticed that this expression got closer and closer and closer to zero. I'm going to put a little question mark here, simply meaning that we haven't really proved that yet, but that's what our calculations seem to indicate. And then we did this example last time, where we let t get closer and closer and closer to five. Now, technically, we were going to 5 from the left-hand side. In a minute, we'll introduce that notation. So technically, there should be a little symbol here that I'm not going to write right now, but just uh, don't worry about it. Uh, this, it seems like, was equal to 49. Our numbers were showing us that this expression was getting closer and closer and closer to 49 as t got closer and closer and closer to 5. All right, so uh, I want to give you three pictures and discuss them with you that sort of illustrate some of the things that can happen here. So in the first picture on the left, we'll go left to right. I've got a function. This is my function f. And notice that f is defined at a. And in fact, in this case, f of a is equal to l. And you can see as x goes to a, the function is getting closer and closer and closer to this line, to l. Pause the video and think about that for a minute if you need to. 
as x goes to a, the function is getting closer and closer and closer to this y value, l. l is a y value, a is an x value. So here, for this example, the limit as x goes to a of f of x is exactly l. For this example, think with me, as x goes to a, the function is still getting closer and closer to not this point up there, not that, but this y value, right? As x goes to a, the function is getting closer and closer to the y value l. So here, the limit as x goes to a of f of x is still l, but in this case, f of a is not the same as l. So here, the first example, f of a equals l and the limit is l. Here, f of a is not equal to l, but the limit is still l, and finally, Again, as x goes towards a, the function is getting closer and closer and closer to the value l. And you can see that, right? And so here we would still say the limit as x goes to a of the function is l. In this case, though, f of a simply does not exist. There is no f of a. So all three cases, the limit is l and yet the behavior of f at a is quite different. So I wanna make sure that you were visually on the same page I've shown you with these three pictures. Let's look at it again. When we say as x goes to a, the corresponding y value, f of x, is above it. So uh, you can imagine as x goes to a, my f of x values are going this way. f of x is going up and down, x is going left and right. So think about it purely in terms of up and down. As x goes to a, f of x is going up to this value l. And you can see it together when you sort of ride like this. You can see the x going to a this way, f of x is going up to l that way. All right, well let's break this video here and then we're gonna do some more examples together.